We've got the GV60 Genesis First Pure EV. Let's get at it. Okay, hold on, putting it in sport. Mm -hmm. And are you guys ready for this? No. Boost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, and that gets you right in the guts. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so fun. All right, we're gonna explain what all of that is in just a second, but right now we're gonna get into what's powering this GV60. We've got the performance all-wheel drive model with a 320 kilowatt electric motor, 429 horsepower and 446 pound-feet of torque. With boost mode, the power jumps temporarily for 10 seconds up to 483 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque. It comes with a 77.4 kilowatt hour battery and offers up to 378 kilometers, 248 miles of range. Also available is the base model called Advanced. It's also all wheel drive with a 234 kilowatt electric motor, the same size battery, 314 horsepower and 446 pound feet of torque. It has up to 399 kilometers or 235 miles of range. So Genesis, the luxury division of Hyundai, you must get more stuff in this. What are the key standard features? The base trim comes with a heat pump a dual 12.3 inch touchscreen and digital driver display, wired Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a head up display, wireless charger, heated steering wheel, heated and ventilated front seats, power front seats with driver seat memory, Napa leather seating surfaces, heated rear seats, an eight speaker audio system, a fixed glass roof with power shade and a hands-free power lift gate. Okay, we're not gonna hit boost again just yet. What else can we do with it though? You gotta put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit that notification bell, you'll be notified when all of our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put another one out on Saturday. So make sure you like and subscribe, but most important, hit that notification bell, but also follow on Instagram. It's motormouth underscore Andrea to get a sneak peek behind the scenes. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And the links are below the like button. This video is brought to you by CarCost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below. Okay, I know you want to do it. Hit it again. Zoinks. That's so fast, isn't it? <laughs> but that is only available on this top performance trim That's right. of this GV60. We're going to get into all the packages and everything coming up in just a moment. But overall, a lot of people are going to wonder, how is this different from mm -hmm. the Hyundai Ioniq 5 yep. and the EV6 from Kia? We've got a question coming up in our hot topic, so stick around for that. But generally, the way this drives, it's a luxury mark, and boy, they hit the mark with this. Yeah, I think that this has a real sporty feel to it. The suspension is a little bit firmer in sport mode, but not a huge difference between comfort and sport. But what I did find is that the steering gets quite a bit heavier in sport mode. So I've kind of just left it in comfort, and I feel like and that's you just hit the best boost. drive mode. Yeah. yeah so I have it in sport and boost, but you know what? Comfort and boost works really well too. Well, the great thing about that boost button is that you just get max everything for a short period of time, which is typically all you need max power for. Like yeah. how often, honestly, be honest with yourself, do you do full wide open throttle in the car you have now? Maybe to pass somebody, yeah. maybe to merge on the highway, something like that. Well, you've got all of it right here. I would say the suspension is maybe a little bit firmer, giving it that athletic feel. Um, I like it a lot. It reminds me actually of the way the EV6 drives. Okay, one thing about electrification is you take the internal combustion engine away and you think, oh, we're done with insulation and yeah. noise. You really have to do a good job with wind noise and road noise, and this definitely hits all of the right marks there. Very quiet cabin. One thing that we did notice, though, is that the turning radius oh, isn't that great on that. It's not that great. It's terrible. I'm I just surprised. Yeah. So uh, the turning radius, not so great, but maneuverability in and out of city traffic, of course, course is excellent. It's and just those over, tight maneuvers, right? Yes. So Andrea and I are not totally on the same page with the looks of this thing. You really like it, don't you? 
I think that this is a mix of the GV70, which some actually think has a bit of a Macon vibe to it, the EV6 by Kia, and the Ionic 5 from Hyundai. This has a clamshell hood. I think that the LED headlights and taillights with the two-line look is really cool. I think that it has, like I said, an athletic, sleek, sporty look to it. All right, I, I've been looking at this car We've been driving it now for a week. I've yeah. been looking at it wondering, what is it about this car that is, there's something proportionally is just not right. Mm. And I figured it out. If you look at it from the side, you have this longer hood, sweeping flyback look, and then a very stubby rear end. And it looks like they just ran out at the back. It, it reminds me of a car from the 90s. It reminds me of the BMW 318 Ti, oh. where they took the three series and they chopped off the back. Yeah. It looks a little bit like they chopped off the back. I just don't see it. I think it's got this wide kind of sexy stance in the rear. And uh, overall, I think a good job was done here. I, I mean, like it's kind of taken different pieces, like I said, of different vehicles. I like a good wide sexy stance see? at the rear too. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this comes standard with 20 inch wheels. We've got 21 inch on our performance model. You'll notice that there's no rear wiper, just like the Hyundai Ionic 5 and the Kia EV6. I have an issue with rear view visibility. And I'm gonna get into that, but first I'm gonna ask Zach, do you have the same issue? Okay, so in order to show you this, I had to do a couple of different angles with yeah. the camera while the car wasn't moving to show you that there's the spoiler and then above and below you have the rear window. That's so right. if you're sitting up taller like me, I can see through both. Yeah. But with Andrea being just a little bit shorter, you're just seeing the top part. So the actual window above the spoiler is quite small, right? Well, I'm actually seeing what you're seeing. You I see can the see the top and the oh, bottom. Okay. But the issue that I have is that the spoiler goes right across the center. Yeah. And it bugs me. Yeah, so it's I don't all about like the, the look of it. It's all the angle if you're if yeah. you're looking down or you're looking yeah. So my concern is we get some pretty heavy rain in Vancouver and with no rear wiper and then me with this spoiler going across the back, I wonder how it's going to do in the rain. Definitely Definitely, if you're interested in this vehicle, check that out. Make sure that the visibility is okay for you. What Zach and I do agree on is the interior and just how beautiful it is and the quality of materials used from Napa leather. I really like this white interior color. I know it would be more Except difficult to keep clean. Oh my yeah. God, the carpets. Imagine keeping that clean. But for a short time, look at it. It's just gorgeous. And I like the trim in here. It has some details and the microfiber on the doors, like very little hard plastic is used. You know what's interesting? In the trunk, they did a deviated carpet. So they've gone with a black carpet on the floor. They should have done that through the rest of the cabin. This has got a fixed panoramic glass roof and it has a shade as well that you can cover up on a warm day. You know the one thing about the piano black we complain about all the time. So they've replaced that with this textured I guess it, it kind of feels cool to the touch. So I wonder if there's some metal in there mm -hmm. or a combination, a composite kind of thing, because it really looks upscale. You see that a lot with Genesis. They go with a pattern trim in their vehicles. And I like it a lot. It's kind of like a gives it a retro feel, yet still very modern. Genesis. Nailed it. Yeah. You know what? They've got a funky, modern looking car with some great in-dash tech. And then they have all the buttons that Zach loves. Buttons for the HVAC, buttons for the radio, buttons yeah. for the seat controls, buttons for this, buttons for that. It's perfect. Well, this is a real driver focused cockpit. And because it has all of these buttons, you don't have to go into the screen for everything. Your heated and ventilated front seats and your heated steering wheel buttons are all there for you. And of course, it's got a dial. And a volume control, right? Yep. And the dial you can use to control the touch screen. Now, I love the Crystal Sphere gear select. I think that it is fantastic. When you shut the vehicle off, it turns kind of into a bit of, of an eyeball. A, yeah, or yep. a disco ball. Um, I think what a fabulous idea to make this vehicle so unique. 
I just don't know how the designers came up with such a brilliant idea. My worry is something gets stuck in there, you spill something in there, and then you get eyeball, but you got no way to turn the car into drive or reverse. And that's my only worry. I think it's cool. I just worry about the longevity of it. You know what, Andrea? They gave us all these wonderful buttons, but you know what they didn't give us? What? Door handles. Yeah. They gave us the stupid flappy handle thing. Yeah. I don't like it. If they had come out with a regular door handle, this would be an absolute home run. Other than that, this interior is really well done and I applaud Genesis for thinking outside of the box and even the way this steering wheel feels, it's chunky and thick and it feels good to the touch. I think it's just so well done. So they always send us the top trim. Mm -hmm. We're not complaining. Uh, but there are two trims, the base model and this one. What's the difference? So the difference between the advanced model and the performance, there are two key features, one being monoblock front brakes and a sport-tuned electrically controlled suspension which I think we kind of like. I mean, maybe we would miss it if we didn't have it. I like the adaptive suspension, especially in an electric car with all that weight. Uh, but you also get more power, right? Yeah. And the boost button. Yeah. So this might be the one to get, but it, it's more expensive. So some other features include the Bang & Olufsen sound system in Canada. It comes on the performance model, actually standard in the US. You get 18-way power driver seat instead of 14-way, a surround view monitor, and also park assist. And if you want to make that jump to more performance, more features, and the adaptive suspension with the boost button, yeah. how much more is that? It's about a $9,000 difference in both Canada and the US. Getting in the back seat, there is plenty of legroom and headroom. I did find that the seats are hard mm. in the back seat. So if you have kids, there are two latch positions on the outboard seats, but there are tethers for three seats uh, over the back. Front row legroom is very good. It is not best in class. The Mustang Mach-E has the most. When it comes to second row legroom, although the back seat does feel roomy, most of the competition offers more space. It has about the same amount of second row legroom as the ID4. This has two cargo areas, one at the front, a frunk, which is really tiny. Uh, show my hand here just how deep it is. You could get a sandwich in there and not much else. And then the back is your typical lift gate with quite a bit of cargo space. However, the rake of the roof does limit how much room you have. It has the least amount of cargo space behind the second row. It's fairly close to the EV6 and Audi Q4. Overall, cargo capacity is the same, smaller than most of the competition, but it does have a little more than the Q4 and the EV6. All right, you want to know about this and the Korean twins. Let's get into that. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. Compared to Tesla Model Y performance, which one is the better choice? Well, for price, I certainly like this one better, especially in Canada. I also like the suspension on this mm -hmm. better. One thing about the uh, Model Y is it's got a really not that sophisticated feeling suspension. It's kind of crashy over bumps. Yeah. It doesn't have an adaptive suspension on the price. In Canada, that thing's like $86,000, $87,000. Yeah. No adaptive suspension. You get that with this model. And then interior-wise, this has such a beautiful interior you can tell that wonderful quality materials are being used there's very little hard plastic and the tech is easy enough to use in here wow that interior is just gorgeous would it be on par with more expensive marks such as mercedes and audi the pictures look really nice we just drove the new EQS Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. I would say the materials in this are as good as that. Yeah, for sure. But the Mercedes-Benz has that hyper screen and it's just such a showstopper and then all of that interior lighting. So it's, it's way, more way, money. Way yeah. more money. With Audi, there's definitely more hard plastic in their interiors, but we haven't driven the Q4 yet, but mm -hmm. uh, hopefully we'll get to drive that one soon and then be able to compare the two. We put out a lot of content each week on the Motormouth YouTube channel and it's so easy to find. All you do is go to the YouTube search bar and type in Motormouth, the name of the channel, then the brand you're looking for. In this case, it's Genesis and all of our videos pop up. It's that easy. Your thoughts on the range versus price compared to the competitors. 
Okay, so I think that this has enough range up to 339 kilometers and 248 miles, but I know range is always number one on people's lists when they're looking at electric vehicles. And this does fall short. The Ionic 5 and the EV6 both offer more, and this is a higher price point. But this luxury electric car is no different than a luxury gasoline car. So when you spend more to get a luxury or performance model, you give things up. With a regular combustion engine, you get more power, but you use more fuel and it's mm -hmm. premium fuel. With this car, you get more features. It's more expensive, but you give up some things. In this case, it's range on some models. And with the high performance model, you get more power. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? Is it worth the price premium over its cousins? Also, how does it compare to the BMW i4 in terms of build and ride quality? Well, the one thing this has that the EV6 and the Ionic 5 doesn't have mm -hmm. is the boost <laughs> button. But they are working on higher performance versions of those two cars. Yeah. And I suspect, Andrea, that the drivetrain that's in this high performance model will go in those ones. I think so too. I mean, you see it with the advanced model with the GV60 is equal to the Ionic 5 and the EV6 long range all wheel drive model. So very similar based on the same platform, right? I think this really comes down to if you can afford it, mm -hmm. you're going to buy this. Um, and if you're more price sensitive, you're going to go for the Korean cousins because they qualify for the rebate. So you're adding an extra layer of discount onto that. So I want to say that this is much more luxurious. You are definitely getting more for your money with the GV60 compared to the Ionic 5 well, and that, the EV6. That key standard features list is crazy it's, long, right? Yeah, just crazy. So when you look at the price point of the advanced model of the GV60 and the Ionic five there's a seventy three hundred dollar canadian difference so that's the ionic five top trim versus the base advanced model. base model mm -hmm. so seventy three hundred canadian Plus. and the and and then the rebate yeah, yeah so you get 12... the five thousand dollar federal rebate in canada and any provincial rebate yeah so that's a, a minimum twelve thousand dollar difference now then if the province kicks in a couple of grand you could be up to fifteen thousand dollars difference yeah so if you're price sensitive it's a no-brainer you're going to get those two cars if you don't care and the ev you want this yeah and the ev6 there's a nine thousand dollar canadian difference between the two so you're gonna you're gonna get you're probably gonna go with the ev6 yeah, that's fourteen thousand dollars cheaper. That's a lot of money, man. Now in the U.S., it's a different story because this or the Hyundai Ionic Five and EV6 they no longer qualify for a tax credit. Here's the breakdown: the GV60 versus the Ionic Five in the U.S. There is about a forty-three hundred dollar mm, difference. That's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. And guess what? The EV6 less than three thousand dollars savings wow well then you're gonna get this you're gonna get the gv60 okay uh, quickly about the bmw the i4 mm. in my opinion the best electric car i've driven yeah. is the i4 because it reminds me of an old school bmw sedan i love it problem is it doesn't offer the space that these crossovers offer or mm. the ground clearance this is 6.3 inches of ground clearance and something like the ionic 5 and ev6 are very close to 6.1 but being a sedan, it's a lot less. All right, you want to know the warranty, the charging, the pricing, and more in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The GV60 advanced trim is $71,000 Canadian and just over $59,000 in the US. The performance model is $79,000 Canadian and just over $68,000 in the US. With a level two charger, the GV60 can fully charge in just over seven hours. And with a DC fast charger, it can charge from 10 to 80% in just 18 minutes. The GV60 has a vehicle to load function, V2L, which is basically a charger on wheels. This GV60 does not qualify for the federal rebate in Canada and does not qualify for the tax credits in the United States. It can tow 2,000 pounds and Genesis offers a warranty of five years, 100,000 kilometers or 60,000 miles. In Canada, Genesis offers five years free scheduled maintenance. In the U.S., it's three years or 36,000 miles. This GV60 has several levels of regen braking, from full coasting all the way to one pedal driving, including coming to a full stop. 
premium EVs. What else can you buy in this category? For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Audi Q4 e-tron with 295 horsepower and 388 kilometers, 241 miles of range. It has a starting price under $60,000. The Tesla Model Y long range with 384 horsepower, 531 kilometers or 318 miles of range and a starting price of $87,000. The Cadillac Lyric with 340 horsepower, more than 480 kilometers, 298 miles of range and a starting price under $68,000. The Mercedes-Benz EQB 350 with 288 horsepower, 391 kilometers or 243 miles of EV range at a starting price of just under $76,000. So there are four electric vehicles for you to consider. Lightning round. Two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I love all the standard features Genesis has added to the base model. I like this boost button. What I'd like is visibility in the rear view window to be a little bit better for me. You were so close. Just fix those door handles. <laughs> Genesis has done such a great job on this luxury EV. It's one to consider in this category. Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, all doing really well with electrification. This video is brought to you by Car Cost Canada. Get the dealer's cost, list of rebates, plus discounted interest rates. Use the promo code MOTORMOUTH to become an expert member and get extra searches. The link is in the description below.